Let's look at this question. Why only the transverse processes of the cervical vertebrae have foramina? Let's look at this configuration to answer this question. We have a bony extension that is seen at the inferior part of the skull. This is the skull or PA. And we have small pieces of bones that are arranged one on top of each other. These are called the vertebral bone. In the region of the neck region, we have the cervical vertebra. And this tile to that, we have the thoracic vertebra, which is seen around the thorax then inferior to that we have the lumbar vertebra we have the sacra then we have the cossacks which is the distal tail region of the vertebral column so we have the vertebral column extending down so looking at the general configuration of the vertebral bone, this is what is presented here. They have spinous process that is an extension from the body and it's seen along the median plane. So it extends up and this is the spinous process. Transversely, we have the transverse processes and these processes are seen to be aligned in the transverse plane. And that is why they are so-called the transverse process. On the transverse process of just the cervical vertebrae is where we have the formation of the foramen. And these foramen are like holes created on the transverse processes of just the cervical vertebra. Why other vertebral bone do not have the formation of this hole created on their transverse processes? So this this is the transverse foramen created on the transverse process of just the cervical vertebra. And this is so created for a reason. And the reason basically is to allow the passage of the vertebral artery. This is the vertebral artery highlighted in black. The vertebral artery is a branch of the subclavian artery, which emerges from the heart of the hiatal artery. The target of the vertebral artery is to go into the neurocranium to supply the brain tissue. And the only way for it to enter into the neurocranium is for it to pass through this hole that is created on just the cervical vertebra in the neck region. So as it emerges, it passes through through this hole that is created on the transverse processes of the cervical vertebra and it enters through in foramen magnum, which is the largest foramen in the skull. We have the right vertebral artery, we have the left vertebral artery, and as they pass through to enter through the foramen magno, they merge to become the basilar artery. This basilar artery will further divide to become the posterior cerebral artery. The posterior cerebral artery will give the blood supply to the posterior region of the brain. And that is the main target of the vertebral artery. But the vertebral artery cannot be able to enter through the neurocranium except through the cervical region. And for it to be well guided and protected, it needs to pass through this foramen so as to create a structural protection for this vessel where it now finds itself within the neurocranium to supply the posterior region of the brain. You can see that the cervical vertebra is justified for presenting this foramen in the transverse processes of the cervical vertebra bone. Why the other vertebra bone do not have this foramen created on their transverse process? Because there is no need creating a foramen that structures will not be passing through it. So everything in anatomy basically is justifiable and of course happen with reason so thank you let's meet again <laughs>